they're gonna get in trouble, then they're gonna they're gonna try to blend in instead of like I'd rather if I'm driving, I'd rather know like this guy is drunk, I can be careful around him, you know what I mean? Because it's yeah. obvious, like, even though it's illegal, they're still driving home. Can they're you still repeat? killing 15,000 people a year. Right. Was your idea that um, you, you proposed that people who are drunk, perhaps it would be better if they were allowed uh, by law to drive home with their flashers on at five miles an hour, just so yeah, they can at least get somewhere not my safely? Idea, like, or preferences, preferences by saying, first, I think driving home drunk is a poor idea and it's not a good thing. However, saying that, I would rather have them drive at five miles per hour with their flashers on, and then if they did hit someone or, or got in an accident, it would not, maybe it would not be fatal. Like, it's better to, in my opinion, it's better to have an accident where there's not fatalities. I think I've read like 15,000 people each year are killed. The number's actually gone down. It was like 17,000 in 2006. And why do you think the number's gone down? I don't know. I think it's education and enforcement it's been going down for like but it's also uh, 50 years to tell you the truth, so I, I think, it, I think you're I all right I, I wouldn't want anybody driving drunk because if you, if you are it doesn't matter if you're going five miles an hour or 15 miles an hour or 30. well let me ask you this when you get hit would by you, a vehicle like would you like to have you doing about five. You went out that vehicle, you have you ever driven like like 20 hours like you're real tired you're, it's worse than you oh, yeah. but it's not against the law down in florida i know that um they have a problem with uh, drivers, elderly drivers, mm -hmm. because um, mm -hmm. I think it was someone was telling me, but they have a lot of instances where people are just running lights. And it's basically the same thing, you know. Yeah, but like let's say, let's say someone is drunk and they hit someone and they, they kill or they damage property, they injure someone. I definitely agree they should be held responsible. It doesn't matter if you're drunk, uh, sober, tired. You are responsible for your actions, regardless of if you're under the influence or not. I think it's just it's just a matter of like, okay, this person has damaged someone. They need to be held to account for that. You know what I mean? Yeah, and a lot of people, I mean, they've had a lot of accidents in Keene where uh, people who have been drunk hit other objects or people, mm -hmm. and then they stay the scene. Yeah, because and they know the consequences. That's a crime, though, isn't it? It is a crime. So... <laughs> And in the state of New Hampshire, I mean, well, wouldn't you, know, you, rather you guys have... could probably argue this, but it's a privilege to have your driver's license. You know, it's not a right. Mm -hmm. And that's been, you know, I know they had one incident in Milford a long, long time ago with one that uh, somebody got pulled over and, and the woman didn't want to give her ID. She said, I didn't need an ID, so she ended up in jail. I'm not sure if you remember that one. Lauren Canario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because a friend of mine pulled her over. No way. <laughs> yeah, he was totally nice to her though. Yes, but he was. He was not a jerk at all. No, it was, that was a great interaction. Yeah, uh, so. It inspired a, a comic to be made too. There, there's a comic version of that also. Yeah. But we just, you know, when we got called over here, just let you guys know, we just, uh, we just wanted to make sure there was nothing that was, that would, you know. I mean, everyone in this group, they don't believe in damaging property. Oh, no, 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 it's not saying that. You know, I, but we, yeah, but I'm, we, I'm saying like we weren't vandalizing. Right. We're just trying to exercise our right. freedom and of we speech. We didn't know, so that's why we came over to talk to you guys. Well, and we appreciate yeah, this you being is, very nice and courteous. Yeah, I, I really appreciate uh, your demeanor, Brandon. And I didn't get to know yeah, your I'm name. Martinez. Martinez, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, I'm Derek, I and uh, James. Uh, I it's it's really you. great to uh, have uh, really friendly, they, casual they, encounters they, with uh, the. I don't know if you guys are law enforcement or just a campus I do security. Work yeah, so it's um, you know it's great to have these types of interactions because uh, it's it does it's not always this way. So a lot of times there's a lot of adrenaline pumping, and I, I like to keep it casual and, and be friendly and you, you know. Get rid of the hat though. What's up with that? You know, during my last arrest, uh, I was <laughs> the hat fell off my head and it's lost forever now. So I'll have to get a new one. But yeah, that was very signature. Yeah, yeah, it was good. Like, uh, yeah, the Heinzman thing. Something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you guys, yeah it you was. Guys, you guys did leave though. It's not like uh, you know. I yeah. think people just get upset when people protest and really want to be. Just, how did you know? Was, wasn't there enough protest to get people out of Vietnam? Wasn't that the, the movement that protested enough to 
have the guys leave Vietnam. Yeah, the I wasn't there, but I, that's what I hear. Yeah, that I mean, yeah. right, yeah, that's what I hear is that uh, protest is healthy for um, for peace, uh, and when people aren't able to protest, it's uh, you know there tends to be a lot of war. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I count my blessings to be able to uh, participate in in but this way. But that is, if you don't exercise your right, you know, so if people aren't going out holding signs and, and stating their opinion and, right. and chalking and showing up to the huntsman event or, or whatever, you might as well not even have the right. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, it, and I and I think you guys. I mean, that's why it's nice living in the United States because you can do that. Well, yeah, I agree with you. We were trying to take it away by, you know, creating that day. Well, and, um, I have a, a question for you. Does this um, college have a free pizza? They had a free pizza zone. zone. Sorry for interrupting you. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was trying to say. I think that, that, that day that they established one, um, I don't know if they knew that you guys were coming or if they just knew because the media was going to be there. Oh, the free speech zone? Yeah. Yeah. Like, personally, I... That seemed totally made up, in my opinion. It uh, came, you know it know came over and was like... I don't know because I was just uh, told what to do, you know, do my job. And, the uh, secret that's when I had the interaction with you guys, and it yeah. went fairly well, I thought. Yeah. Um, I, I felt like uh, my f supposed r right to free speech was infringed upon that day, um, because obviously I wasn't hurting anyone, I wasn't right. making a, a scene. If you incite by uh, creating an atmosphere where somebody is feels nervous or even the crowd, like if you were to stand up in a movie theater and say, um, fire, and everybody started running and somebody got hurt and killed, and they yeah. thought it was you who did it. I, yeah, I agree with I, you. That's I hear that, the but I don't, I don't think anything was... Right, if you cause alarm, and people, because some people cannot take some people yelling and screaming because either they have some post-traumatic stress in their life or whatever, and they, they want to just go there and listen to the person and stuff. So well, the concern question, for me, though, well, if I may, the concern for me was that I was told multiple times while entering the building that signs weren't allowed. And this is a new thing. Um, starting with Obama, uh, he's not allowing signs at political rallies, and that started in 2010. I think, you know what it is, is sometimes they don't want people coming in there with opposing signs, like, like say, yeah. Ralph Nader. You guys all know Ralph Nader, yeah. right? Yeah how famous he is, if someone was voting for Ralph Nader and, and President Obama was in there and they were all like, Ralph Nader, Ralph Nader, it's kind of taken away from, you know, the what they want to deliver their speech and they want to show people what they can offer. And that's what people look for. They want to know what a politician can give them without making all these, you know, promises that they don't really keep, you know. Yeah, going back to the alarm thing, though, by, by what metric should the alarm, like, Let's say I see someone walking with a gun down the street, and that causes me alarm. Should that be illegal? Like, I mean, you know what I mean? Or I think in the state of New Hampshire, as you guys all well know, you know, you can carry a gun outside your purse, and you don't need a permit. And um, like some people, some cultures, I may be getting this wrong, but I think in some Asian cultures, like not wearing a shirt for a male is cause for alarm, let's there, say. There is. And or in the French culture, maybe they like to go nude more than Americans. Right, and you can see that in Broadway. You know, you go to Vermont. It's it legal there, there's no right. problems. You know I, don't see, I don't see nude people, I work in Broadway. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't see one. Well, they still have the old thing, you know, that people can walk down there nude. And, and, um, I just think that when uh, people get alarmed at different things, mm -hmm. it's like some people uh, when the fire trucks come and they get the flashers going, some people can be thrown into seizures from the, from the lights uh, flashing. So sometimes we just got to tell the fire department, hey, can you turn the fire lights off? Because we got some students that will be thrown into seizures and they're good about it. Now, one thing I, I noticed, like I watched these old movies, I wasn't alive back then, but the cop car had like one rotating <laughs> siren. Now it's like, it's a light show, well, you know, you know what I mean? why? You know why that is? Because there's so much traffic on the road and a lot of cops are getting hit. And the only reason why they have those lights is so they can see them so far away. Because mm -hmm. if you ever watch a lot of the uh, programs, like Cops and stuff like that, but where they had hits where the cop gets out of the car and looks back and then boom, they have their people. It's like, you know, the, I, I 
See, it's like the light. You know, when the bug goes in, don't go for the light. Mm -hmm. And they're like, like this. It's like they get sucked in. Actually, I'll have video. Do you, are you familiar with the Keene Police Department? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm not sure which officer. I have an officer, he's like, he's pulled over one of my friends, so I'm recording it. <laughs> I guess full disclosure here, but. I have video and I pointed out in the video, like it's raining and he gets out of his car and he stands in traffic. He gets out of the car in traffic, there's cars passing him. And then he stands in, in the road talking to the driver. And I, I was just thinking like, maybe you should go to the other side. Well, they, you do. And I mean, I work in a town. Just for safety purposes. Right, I work in a small town where there's, there's like one street light or two street mm -hmm. lights and you're out there by yourself. And sometimes it, it's, it's good to, you know, go on the other side of the vehicle. But the bad part is there's a lot of ditches. If you That's go on true. the other side of the vehicle, you're like, <laughs> you're done, you know? Well, in th this case, it was no, no ditch or anything. Right. I was actually standing in the grass, so he could have stood there as right. well. Right, and it's, and, it's, and it's nervous, too, when you're a police officer, when you pull someone over, you don't know who it is. Mm -hmm. And there's been a lot of incidents where police officers have been getting shot. When they pull, you know, they pull behind somebody. Yeah, that's that's Jeremy an argument. Sharon over there, and in, in, um, I think he's from Hillsboro, but he got shot and killed in a small town. He pulled up behind these two guys to check them out because they were in a in a rest area, and he had some words with him. Exchange not bad words, but back and forth. And the guy turned around, and shot him, and killed him. That's a that's a case though for not having bad laws. Like, let's say I'm a, a criminal and I have three drug convictions and I have a bunch of drugs in my car and you've just pulled me over and I have a weapon I'm gonna consider in my mind I really don't want to go to jail right I you know I'm not thinking ahead I'm just gonna shoot you mm -hmm. because it's the convenient thing to do I you know for me at the time so that to me that's like a result sometimes of bad laws not all the time there are crazy people but we've seen that down Florida right <laughs> mm -hmm. that guy was chewing the other guy's face off yeah, there are definitely crazy people. That's and, that's and for sure. But a lot of people respond to incentives, like, like, like I said, if I'm a criminal and you you have just pulled me over, and I'm thinking like, oh man, I'm about to go to jail. I don't want to go to jail. Maybe I will resist you. And if let's say dr I don't know, let's say in a perfect world, drugs were illegal, then it's like, well, you've pulled me over maybe because I was speeding. Right. I'll just take the ticket and I'll go. Right. And, and you know what? As a police officer, like in the violence is what I believe. <laughs> right, and, and just because I pull someone over doesn't mean I have to get my ticket. That's true. It's a really it's an educational piece. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like, hey, could you slow down? Because that's out of respect. There's a lot of kids in the area. You don't want them to get hurt or anybody else to get hurt. Yeah, I, I mean, I would rather like let's say you saw someone smoking pot. I would rather have you remove it from them and like destroy it, and and just say like, hey, please, you know, this is against the law. Don't do this. Right. <laughs> Like, you, you can use your disclosure, like you just right. told D me. The discretion. And, 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 I, and I think Discl that a lot of times that the police officers do work with the people <laughs> mm -hmm. when they arrest them and stuff. And when they go to court, they do work things out. Not everybody goes to jail. Mm -hmm. Not everybody um, gets a huge fine. You know, if you're really good with the prosecutor and stuff, and, and really good, polite, and he's polite to you, and everything works out good, sometimes it, you know, when you go to court, it's, you know, and a piece of paper says, you can get a $500 fine, and... All of a sudden, it's either placed on file, you know. But for but six per capita, or a year. per thousand people, the United States has the most prisoners worldwide. Like we outnumber China, Russia, the United Kingdom, all, everyone combined. Yeah, but I think like you can look up about, Wikipedia. You can look up right, any source you but want. But I think the United States has probably the best prisons. The, the best what? Prisons. Oh, uh -huh. because you look at um, where's that one with that guy who killed the girl. And he got sent to Peru or, or yeah, that prison is like they have gangs in there, and they basically put you in, and you got to fend for yourself. Well, I mean, I won't deny that it's like uh, I, I don't know if I want to go here, but let's say I'm a slave. Well, I had the best. I had the best uh, master. I had the best house. I'm still a slave, though. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's like anything. But I'm just saying is uh, we are really scrutinized and we really looked upon when we, when we arrest people mm -hmm. just because a person's in custody doesn't mean you can keep on beating them or you got to protect the person's right that you arrested because if you don't the person that he did the crime against you're not protecting their rights either because mm -hmm. now this might get thrown out of court because you messed up you know what I'm saying you know I, another hmm. it's a law it's a you know it's a big wide thing but just to get back to this doesn't look too bad. 
Well, you like it, so that's, uh, we right. really appreciate you like our artistic. We, we, just don't, we just don't want anybody, since it's new center, you know, they, get, but they just don't want anybody to um, do anything bad. Like, President of the United States is whatever, they're gonna make claims to anybody and point fingers, but this doesn't seem to be too bad. Are you, you sure about that number? Um, I'm like fairly 99 sure. percent sure? Let me look at it. 25% of the I world's prisons? Yeah. Person, the hot dog commercial? When the guy says, I'm 99% sure, and the guy goes, and you're not sure. No, I'm 99% sure. He goes, it's okay if you don't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's 25% uh, of the world's prison. Yeah. So do you think this is going to be disturbed or washed away before tomorrow morning? United States Oh, I don't know if it's... Oh, unless it's going to rain. Oh, all right. If that's all we're worried about, that's good. <laughs> Who is the big guy with his uh, police car? <laughs> <laughs> I guess he's is resting. He it's, his, it's his day off, he is, yeah. Yours was lifted, right? I was never banned oh, from never campus, banned? yeah. Uh, there was another person, uh, Daryl. He's, he's working he was, on it. Uh, Daryl was uh, banned from uh, Keene State College while just being here. He, he actually hadn't done anything. Yeah, it, it, a shout out right now. Yeah, Ian was the one on the, the megaphone. And, um, you know, I don't know what's really wrong with the megaphone, but if someone wants to ban someone, that's fine. But then... Uh, to ban Daryl as well is was pretty absurd. Um, <laughs> Who's the guy with the mask? Did they, uh, uh, that's that thing. was uh, what, which mask? Graham, what Graham had a mask on. They thought it was Ian. Okay. Oh, <laughs> and, the woman, and the woman. Uh, was, Kelly. was it Kelly? Yeah, Kelly. Yeah, that's uh, that's funny. I'll have to play a clip of that <laughs> video after everyone. this. All right, guys. Yes, good to see you, Brandon. Good to see you guys, and take care of yourself, son. Yep, <laughs> thank nice you. Uh, Martinez? Take care of yourself. Okay, well, it's a pleasure. Thank you, you so much. No problem, take care. Have a great evening, guys. Hopefully we're going to expose those liars. How do you feel about that interaction? I felt it went pretty well. Um, he's definitely a nice guy, even if you don't 100% agree with him. So, I mean, he was very courteous. Can't complain at all about that. Okay. And he had no problem with the message, so that's great. Cool. I think uh, we had a great discussion. Um, we shared some information with each other and really empathized uh, with each other. You know, it seems like we share a lot of the same concerns. We both want peace and uh, more freedom and for people's rights to be respected. So I think we have a lot in common and, you know, uh, through more interactions like this, we'll be able to create the peaceful world that we all want to see. Anything from you, Garrett? Um... No, I think that was a great encounter. I didn't focus on the video at first. I was just primarily focusing on shocking with the intention in the back of my mind to turn on the camera if security did arrive. And they did, so convenient timing. I was done with my shocking. I got to get a video of security guys, and we'll be having so much to put up on the internet now. It's true, and I want to uh, make mention also for folks who heard uh, some ch 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 earlier. Uh, that was me communicating with Ian back at base uh, via these cool new walkie-talkies that uh, some of us have got and that really helped keep me safe today. I mean imagine if this interaction didn't go well um, it would be pretty easy for me to communicate to a wide audience uh, that I was in danger or someone else was in danger and we could get help immediately. So we're gonna head back now. It was a great event and uh, we'll see you later. Peace.